name is Arjun Balar. I'm a medical oncologist and director of the NYU Genitourinary Cancers Program. I'm here today to talk about Cohort 1 of IMVigor 210, which is a Phase 2 trial of atezolizumab as first-line therapy in patients with metastatic urethral cancer who are ineligible for cisplatin-based chemotherapy. Patients with metastatic urethral cancer who are ineligible for cisplatin-based therapy unfortunately have historically very poor outcomes. The acceptable standard for these patients includes carboplatin-based therapy, which has a response rate of approximately 30 to 40 percent. However, median survival is in the range of 9 to 10 months, and there is no proven survival benefit for this line of therapy. A significant portion of patients with metastatic urethral cancer will be considered ineligible for cisplatin-based chemotherapy. Most commonly, the reasons for these patients to be ineligible for cisplatin includes poor performance status, impaired kidney function, uh, peripheral neuropathy, as well as hearing loss, and including heart failure as well. IMVigor 210 Cohort 1 was a single-arm Phase two trial testing atezolizumab as first-line treatment in cisplatin-ineligible patients with metastatic urethral cancer. Key eligibility criteria for this study included metastatic urethral cancer that was never treated in the metastatic setting, at least 12 months since completion of perioperative chemotherapy until the time of diagnosis of metastatic disease, and ineligible for cisplatin. A total of 119 patients were enrolled to this trial and received atezolizumab at 1,200 milligrams IV every three weeks until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. The demographics of the patients enrolled included a median age of 73, 21% of patients who were age 80 or greater, and 66% of patients who had visceral metastatic disease. The primary endpoint of this study was objective response rate that was centrally confirmed. Key secondary endpoints included progression-free survival, overall survival, as well as duration of response to treatment. PDL1 expression was tested in, in archival specimens that were submitted from patients and was tested using the SP142 Ventana assay which looked for PDL1 expression in infiltrating immune cells. So here are the key results from the study. The objective response rate for all 119 patients was 23%, including 9% of patients who achieved a complete response. In the IC23 subgroup, the objective response rate was 28%. At a median follow-up of 17.2 months, the median duration of response had not yet been reached, and the median survival was 15.9 months. Additionally, 70% of responses are still ongoing at the time of analysis, and the one-year OS rate was 57%. So the next question is, is how do we use the pd one expression to make treatment decisions in the clinic with atezolizumab? In the first-line setting, what we observed is that 28% of patients achieved an objective response who had IC23 levels of expression, However, patients who had IC0 and 1 level of expression had a 21% response rate. There was no significant difference in median survival between the two groups. What this data shows us is that while there may be a slight enrichment in responses for patients who have pd one expression, the absence of pd one expression does not preclude response. So the key takeaways in terms of safety with atezolizumab were that only 16% of patients developed a grade 3 or 4 toxicity related to treatment. This is in stark contrast to the 21% rate of treatment discontinuation due to toxicity from carboplatin-based chemotherapy, which is the standard in this setting. The overall rate of immune-related adverse events were low, and none required more than corticosteroids to manage that immune-related side effect. So when we think of atezolizumab safety, it is important to put the treatment into context. Carboplatin-based chemotherapy is considered the standard of care in these patients and is associated with a high rate of treatment-related toxicity. The treatment landscape in metastatic urethral cancer is rapidly changing. What we observed in the 119 patients enrolled into IMVigor 210 Cohort 1 were response rates, duration of response, and median survival that was very promising. When we put these data into context with the standard of care in cisplatin ineligible patients, which is currently carboplatin-based chemotherapy, what we observe is that the median survival of 15.9 months compares very favorably with the median survival of 9 to 10 months, which, was, which is what we commonly see with carboplatin-based chemotherapy, and also a very favorable safety profile, 
where up to 21% of patients treated with carboplatin-based chemotherapy will discontinue treatment. What these data tell us is that perhaps atezolizumab and other PD-1 or PD-L1 directed therapies could potentially become a new standard of care in cisplatin ineligible patients. However, what we are also seeing is that the outcomes observed in this study could be broadly applied to potentially all patients with metastatic urothelial cancer. However, randomized studies controlled against chemotherapy will need to be conducted to truly define the role of atezolizumab in the first-line setting. I certainly envision a future in the next three to five years where immune checkpoint inhibitors, either single agent or combination, will become the new standard of care in the first-line setting in metastatic urothelial cancer.